Today I'm going to talk about why people are leaving California and New York and then we're going to get into the mass store closures that are happening today. So let's get into it. Expenses are rising in virtually every corner of the world. Year over year, that which we need to buy becomes more expensive, and yet wages have remained flat at best in real terms. Statistically, you won't see that, but just spend five minutes to roughly calculate this on your own, and you will understand the truth. Now people are doing what they can, voting with their feet. So what's happening exactly? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to cover two basic issues, and that is the states people are leaving and the states people are going to. And I also want to talk about the economy and the store closures, very important issues that I do believe are connected to the economic situation today in the United States. But no matter where you are in the world, this data is for you. Let's begin by taking a look at this. Americans continue to flee to low tax states, an issue that I have covered over the years. You have to understand right now, California, a lot of people have moved to California, over 500,000 people, but more than 600,000 people moved out. And that means 138,000 people on the net had left California. Illinois and New York are also very high up on this list. I'm going to show you the list in a moment. I just wanted to give you an idea of exactly what is happening and we have a very common element in all three of these places and that is it's extremely expensive in terms of what people get paid and what the average things cost your house your car your insurance your bills among the top 10 states that the largest number of Americans have fled, seven of the 10 are states which rank among the top 15 states for the worst tax burdens. All right, that's what we have in this article. I want to show you another one. A new poll reveals that 53% of California residents are considering leaving the Golden State because of the high cost of living. Now, this is, of course, just a sample, and I don't think that the numbers would be this high if everyone were to be asked exactly exactly what they thought, but it just gives us an idea that a lot of people do not like their current situation. That's all it really tells me. The results are sobering. Nearly two-thirds, 62% of respondents said that they believed the best days of California were in the past. And perhaps if you live there, what do you think? Do you think that California's best days are in the rear view mirror or things will change? You can tell me. Nearly three-fourths of residents, 72%, say cost and availability of housing is a very serious issue for California, and that's 76% in the Bay Area. I mean, look at how expensive the homes are, and then you compare that to the average household income, obviously we have a problem. Unless you're part of that top 10%, you can't afford your normal expenses. So that's really strange, because how do you build a city around that level of income gap? It just doesn't make sense. The wealth gap is crazy there and you can't have a middle class that way. You have individuals who make a hell of a lot of money and then everybody else. There's a San Francisco Gate article here that they quote, and basically what they're saying is that nearly everyone we talk to cite the high cost of living as the primary reason that they left those different areas. And they even mentioned the fact that one of the most frequently Googled questions in California last year was, should I move out? That's very telling because that's people actually considering what they want to do, right? And maybe they don't move out, maybe they stay where they are, but eventually, as those expenses rise, you start to have people leaving. And that is apparent not just in the last month, not just in the last year, but it's a trend. As things get more expensive, they're leaving. Net in migration by state, excluding foreign migration. You could see Florida right here on the top of the list. And I'll show you a couple others and you will see that familiar trend. Arizona number two on the list. Texas is number five. And just look at the very, very bottom. You're seeing New York, 167,000 in the negative, Illinois, 144,000, and California, 137,000. All of them lost population as a result of different factors, including taxation. 
total population growth from 2017 to 2018. Again, top of the list, Texas at 379,000, Florida 322,000, and New York and Illinois at the very bottom of the list. You can see right here that they are in the negative. State population living outside the state one year ago, Florida in the top spot, Texas number two, and at the bottom, once again, we're seeing New York and Illinois. But I want to change gears right now at this point. I don't think there needs to be much more said about that. The statistics speak for themselves. But I want to look at what's happening with the economy. If the economy was booming, if wages were rising as much as they say they are, it doesn't really get into the explanation for why things are the way they are. I'm going to show you a series of different articles that really, to me, are very telling. The retail sector took a blow in the final month of 2018, adding to a list of consumer economic casualties amid year-end turmoil in the financial markets and a protracted U.S. government shutdown. They always want to just throw that in there, but of course, the problems existed the month before, so... It's just really a scapegoat. Retail sales dropped 1.2% month over month in December, the largest drop since September 2009, according to the Census Bureau. The dip was broadly unexpected. Whoa, it can go into the negative? Is that really possible? My goodness. I thought we manipulated the numbers well enough. No, apparently not. You know, they try to make excuses for all of this. I was actually seeing in the news how they were talking about the data must have been wrong. So don't worry about it. And that's funny because if we would saw this go into the positive for this month in the exact same amount, 1.2% in the positive, they would have said, this is great, it's fantastic, stocks would have risen. But because it's in the negative, they actually consider the fact that, oh, well, it's probably just bad data. Well, you know what? I'm tired of this garbage. I really am. When we see this working in their favor, they highlight it, stocks rise. And of course, when it goes against what they want, then suddenly the information's probably false so the market doesn't react to it. Nothing but a bunch of garbage and quite frankly, I'm not having it. Here's the chart just to give you an idea of how things looked over the last few months. They've been declining. Why do we have to pretend that everything is fine when it's not? Yes, there are bright spots. I understand that. But you can just go into the media, go to any channel, it doesn't even matter, and they're going to tell you why there's kittens, why there's rainbows, why there's flowers. It's so fantastic. Go there, get your high, come back for some reality. Get your shot of reality that you need to be able to protect yourself and your family. If you're always thinking everything is positive, that's not good. You need to be aware of the other side of the equation and that's what I try to present here. I'm just one person. I'm just one individual bringing you some data. If you see all the sources of info, you're going to be able to piece it together on your own. Okay, I'm just trying to give you what's not available elsewhere. Online retailers monthly change. Take a look how bad the online sector was. And that shouldn't be this way because everybody's saying, well, if the retailers are doing bad, then it must be because everybody's going online. But look at it. You're seeing it on this chart. It only goes back to 2012, but it's the worst that I've seen. Of course, this can turn around in one month. Nobody really knows what will happen, but I'm just trying to give you the data. Now, let's take a look at this issue of store closures. And to me, when you start seeing the trends, you can't tell me that Amazon is the reason that all of this is happening. Sure, maybe for one or two or three different types of stores, but I'm seeing all different types that are getting pushed over the edge into bankruptcy. Corsight Research released an outlook of 2019 store closures saying there's no light at the end of the tunnel. According to the global market research firm's report, six weeks into 2019, U.S. retailers have announced already, check this out, over 2,000 store closings. That's up 23% compared to last year. Bankruptcies are also continuing at a rapid pace with a number of filings in the first six weeks of 2019 already at one third of last year's total. You have to understand the situation that is happening 
today. Don't believe what you're told in the mainstream media. They're trying to spoon feed you and people love that. And my goodness, I feel sorry for people who take it for what it is. Truly, there is no excuse for your ignorance. It's 2019 and you should be looking into it for yourself. The money GPS doesn't feed you with a silver spoon. You're not getting that here. And I know that if you're a subscriber, you totally agree with that. You got to be responsible for yourself. So let's take a look. Children's clothing retailer Jim Barry files for Chapter 11 and bankruptcy protection. Shop Co. to close more than 250 stores amid bankruptcy filing. Pay less shoe source preparing for second bankruptcy and store closures. Charlotte Roos files for Chapter 11, will close 94 stores. The chain plans to completely liquidate if it can't find a buyer. According to a court filing, the company has more than 8,700 employees. You have to understand this. It's not about this store. It's about the people that work at that store. And then, of course, if this store closed down, what about the store next to it? What about the malls that they're in? What about the plazas, the strip malls that are going to need to fill that gap because of of these big retailers shutting down. It's going to have a ripple effect. If things progress the way they are, 2019 is going to be worse than 2018. The economic factors are piling up. And if you want to point to all that fake garbage, we can do so. In fact, let me know if you'd like to see a video entirely based on the manipulated numbers and how they can make the economy look good. For example, the U3 unemployment rate showing it near record low, the fake jobs numbers, the fake inflation numbers. I'll just show you a list that the media tends to show people and I'll literally present the video as if it's positive and fantastic and I won't even mention all the negative stuff. I think it would be funny because I know that if you're here at the end of the video you actually enjoy my information, you actually like it, you want to know the truth but I think it would be really funny to see what kind of comments we get and uh, that'll be interesting. Perhaps I'll do it. Let me know in the comments. That's all for this video. If you found it informative please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up you support the channel. That's all you got to do. Click that like button and you're supporting me. I really appreciate it. I want to thank you for that. Of course, I want to thank all of those who comment on the channel as well. Each and every single comment helps to push this higher up in the search rankings. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. You can flip through them at Amazon. There's a link in the description below. You'll be able to find out everything from the foundation, the history, the asset class, is making money and so much more. Check it out at the link if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com.